Welcome to ScreenPrintingArtist.com. Uh, this is my YouTube tutorials that I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do some wings today. Wings are super useful. They're real popular in uh, a lot of t-shirt designs. They're useful for um, making like crests, heraldic type crests that look like uh, more medieval. They're also used in a lot of uh, a lot of like logo style work and stuff as well. So it's important to know how to do good ones. Um, just real quick before I start. Um, at ScreenPrintingArtist.com. If you go there, I'm offering this boot camp. Um, this is CorelDraw 060 boot camp. Um, what we're going to be doing in that is I'm going to be doing, uh, there's two webinars a week for a six week course. So there's basically 12 modules to the course. You can check out all the details on my website um, and sign up quick as I, I have a limited amount of spots, but I'm really excited to teach people directly. Um, so, wings. First, we need some sort of reference. Now, you can use a piece of clip art for reference or some different things, but it's useful to go right to the source. You can use an actual wing if you can. I got this a public domain photo, um, so I can I don't have to worry about rights issues, and I can copy parts of it. But I really just want the outside shape. I want to capture the shape of this wing because then I can use this wing in a lot of different places. I can use it multiple times or different ways, but I really want to create the feather look. So to create the feather look, I'm going to kind of first get the shape of the feathers. So I want to go to wireframe mode, Alt V W, and then hit the space bar. I'm using CorelDRAW 7 today. Um, I still use 5 from time to time, but I, but 7's actually growing on me slowly, so I'm starting to use it too. Uh, I'm going to go a little farther. Now I want to overlap the feather a little bit. I want to go a little bigger, um, just so that it's going to it's not going to show out from underneath. The other one. So see, I, I click. I use the freehand tool. And I double click. When I double click, it allows me to make another line right from that node and go to the next. So I click, double click, double click, double click, and then I come over to the shape tool and I double click right away. That selects all the nodes. Then I go up here to the property bar and say convert to curve, and it con converts all the nodes in the in the outline here to a curve, which is important because I want to make this into a the feather shape. And you can see, I kind of have to make like a butter knife shape here. You see that? And that, that's what makes it look like a feather, kind of. And then I draw the bottom out. So it looks like it gives you that kind of, so that's kind of like a butter knife. That's that's the way a feather kind of looks on a bird's wing, if you've ever seen one. Um, here, really tried to look at it, um, which is really the key, I guess, is not so much seeing it, but actually observing it in a way where you really notice the shape and you know, which is interesting because there's a famous wildlife artist as I build this on the double clicks here. I'm kind of creating the inside shape here to this. Um, I can't off the top of my head remember who it was, but uh, said that, you know, real good art, especially wildlife art, isn't about um, accuracy or um, it's just about really looking and seeing things the way they really look and, and that's that takes a lot of practice so here i made this inside shape and this outside shape so i'm going to group this draw a marquee around control g group it and now what i can do i'm going to fill them both with white just so that i don't have to uh have to monkey with that later and then what i think i'm going to do though is to make my life a little easier i'm going to ungroup them actually i'm going to combine them now you'll see why a little bit later, but that'll actually help me with rendering it if I want to do a shape. So I'll combine them. I can always break them apart. So now they're one shape, and they're filled with white here, and they have a black outline. And now I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to right click. And then, I was just checking my recording here. And then what I can do is I can kind of move this up here. You can kind of see how it overlaps the other one, right? Kind of shows right here. And then once I do that, I can control D and it'll throw it in a different position. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll back up control Z, control Z, control Z. And I'll move forward one, which is control shift Z. And so now I've got it just after I combine it as a curve. Now I'm going to take this and drag it. I'm going to right click and then I'm just going to move, I'm just going to rotate it just a little bit like that. 
and then watch since I did that by dragging it now when I hit the control D again it's gonna throw another one down there and then I can kind of move that but it kind of rotates it see and then I hit it control D again and see how it kind of rotated for me already so it leaves that slight rotation on so that can kind of speed things up a little bit for you so then control um, D oops drag it put it here and then rotate it and you'll see how this is kind of right there and then control D again puts it over there 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 and you can see how it kind of feathers it over right which is kind of what I want now when you get to about here you can see that the feathers change right so these are like the, the fingers of the bird you know the longer feathers and then we've got these shorter feathers so I don't know if I want to stick to the exact situation that we have here with the, with the um, you know to marry this exactly up I'm not looking for an exact copy but I do want to change the feathers so that it looks like um, the actual bird so I'll do this lower feather here and I'll make one and this is less of a butter knife look right more of like a I don't know like a spatula or something you might say right so then I'm just double clicking here and move this up to make sure it's overlapped by these top feathers here and I double click hit this and then I'm going to round it just a little bit at the end and make my feather shape and you notice I'm working from the top down that's because I want these feathers to uh, to overlap each other so that's actually an issue but I'm just doing that for ease right now. I'm gonna have to come back and I'm gonna have to re-stagger them, like reshuffle them like a thing of cards before I go to the next level up. Because for the next level up, I'm gonna work all the way down here, but then I'm gonna work this way so that these will all overlap these bottom feathers, so that makes sense. And if it doesn't, don't worry about it. It'll, it'll make sense in a little bit. Um, so this, and you notice they're a little bit sharper here, so I wanna make sure that I capture that just a little bit. I'll nudge it up here just so it's a little sharper on the tip. Okay, and then we need a center to this feather, right? Because there's always a center uh, support to the feather itself. So we want to make sure we make that quick. Okay. And I know for those bird lovers out there, you may be wincing at this. Um, this is not going to be an anatomically correct uh, wing. So forgive me uh, for that. <laughs> but uh, I'm just trying to get this done so you can make a t-shirt. Uh, Control L, combine it. And then we should be good to go now for creating this, uh, this part of the wing now, which is going to be here. And then I'm going to pull this over like that. I'm going to shrink it just a little bit. And then go D, D. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a bunch. You see they get smaller as they go. And then they might look too organized here. And so I'll, I'll move them down a little bit. You'll see that to kind of angle them. Now, one thing is, your wing can have a certain shape, and you could marry these to that shape if you wanted. Um, birds have different wing positions depending on whether they're going to go in for a landing or they're going to The next stage of this I want to do is going to relate to reshuffling the feathers, because I don't want to have to do too many feathers, you know, you do 100 feathers, you don't want to have to like figure out what order they're in. So I'm going to go back to uh, enhance mode instead of wireframe. I'm going to look at them. Okay, so I got these. You can see these are these are stacked in this direction, right? And they should be in that direction. So that's that not, isn't necessarily a bad thing. You can see the bottom ones are in the right order, so I don't have to reshuffle those. And then these technically are pretty much in the right order as well. So I'm going to go back wireframe I'm not in bad a shape as I thought maybe sometimes you have to have to redo it I'm gonna convert these to white and then I'm gonna take these since they're shorter I could just draw a marquee around them grab them without hitting any of those other feathers which is another thing too you want to select 
at the right time. Uh, select what you're doing at the right time here and then click them all. See, I just click them again and then I can drag all of them, kind of skew them all down a little bit. Um, useful. You get used to navigating some of this after you mess around with it for a while. So now I'm going to save my file and then I'm going to make a shorter feather by just taking this feather that I've just done here. I'm going to draw it a little longer. So I'm going to turn it so it's vertical like this, so straight up and down. That way it won't distort and look weird. And I'll um, leave it like this. I'm going to draw it a little longer than it was. And then I'm just going to trim it. And I'll just take it, trim it with a box here. And then I'll just click the, hold the shift key down, click this, and I'll just come up to the property bar and trim it. And I have a smaller feather here, delete. And this way I can kind of start to make these feathers same sort of thing you know you can make these feathers up here that kind of I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit that kind of go over the top of the wing um, without spending an enormous amount of time now you can angle these a little bit if that aesthetically is the right thing to do you know um, you angle them this way and then slant them up you know depending on the angle of the wing sometimes that could be the that could be the right way that you want it to be. Now you can kind of see these feathers underneath, how they're kind of longer. So that's what we want to do. We want to make them a little longer. And I'll angle it up here like this. And then, so there's that feather. And then we got another one here. And you want to turn them again, remember? So I turn them a little bit. And then Control D. So I'll just bump a bunch out here. And then I'll move them up into the right position. Sometimes it gets a little hard to see too, so you gotta kinda defocus your eyes a little bit. Now, once I get up to here, I'm gonna do that again. Right click and angle it just a little bit and then bump it over. I don't wanna spend too much time, but there we go. You can see, by you hitting the Control D key, you're kinda fanning them out, right? So they kinda work here. And if you get them where they're, they're, the angle isn't right with the rest of the feathers, you can always come back, compress them a little bit, so that kind of re-slants them, and you just bump them over. Um, and now that we're near the middle here, I'm going to grab this feather. Whoops, I kind of double-clicked it by accident. I'm going to grab this feather, right-click, and I'm going to kind of fan it the other way just a little bit. Move that towards the middle. You can kind of see that uh, a couple transition feathers here as we're moving down to the bottom. Right. Let me save my file. Getting there. Sometimes it takes a little while to do these, but this isn't too bad. Some people uh, can go crazy with this detail. But uh, that's not the goal, really. The goal is to uh, give you a realistic looking image in the least amount of time. And you see how I kind of alternating them? That helps to make it look a little more realistic. See if they're all perfectly even. Um, sometimes it makes it look kind of real fake. You know, you'll see some clip art that's done that way. Um, where it's just too, uh, the shape is too perfect. And that's not the way a real bird looks, you know, they're, they're kind of messy. Uh, the feathers, you could also compress them a little bit as you get a little lower if the angle changes. Um, if you wanted to have real accurate ones, the more you observe wings on a bird, you'll start to see that uh, they really do, almost like scales on a fish, they kind of map along the surface quite a bit. Um, here we go, right here, and maybe one last one on the edge here. And again, these might be kind of long for what we're doing, so we may have to trim that up, but I can do that later. Just looking in at them here. We can zoom out real quick, and then we'll Alt B and kind of see how that fanned out, right? And then go back. Alt V W, enter. 
And then you can just do the top part here, which is like last couple pieces. So we got feathers that are coming up like this. Rotating up here off the top, and then we'll do our little matting at the top. So this, and then we'll really try to rotate these out. Yeah, we want to make sure that they're covering the rest of the design though. You don't want the back pieces of your feathers, your other side's feathers showing. So um, that's pretty important. Um, and this wing, when we're done with it, be able to use it quite a bit for a lot of different designs. Um, so it's useful to uh, spend a little bit of time on it and make it look good up front so that later on um, you know you don't have to keep recreating it from scratch. And you can see how this one's getting kind of long so if it's too long this way you can always come in with your uh, grab the nodes, shrink it a little bit as long as it doesn't distort it just keep it angling it here slightly right there, right there there, going up a little bit. There. Now I'm going to carve my way out here one more time. And then I can kind of bring this up and over. This will be the last, like, there's second, there's primary feathers and there's like secondary feathers. And then there's feathers just that just kind of like form the, the body of the bird. So those are usually quite a bit smaller. Almost again, almost like scales on a fish versus the fins. So we're just kind of trying to make it bear with me here. Almost there, just kind of averaging them out here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. Hit the Z key and then you hold the hum. Shift key to zoom out, kind of look at it here. Almost there. There we go. Over here. And then I'm going to shrink this by just pulling those nodes forward a little bit. Here, quick. It's there, and we'll save it. Shrink it one more time. Just pulling it down, and then Zoom out here again, hit the Z key, and then shift minus twice, and we'll zoom in a little tighter. Just make sure my there's you still the main thing is you want to make sure they're overlapping the last one and they're not leaving a piece out. It's it's okay if occasionally they they're not perfect, but you know, for the most part you want them to all be pretty consistent. And that way you're gonna get a good look to your to your wing like that I'm gonna hit save and now I should be able to just kind of form the form the top edge zooming in I'll zoom out here and the last one uh, a lot of times you can do it several different ways but a lot of times you can just take your uh, Take your feather here, right click, like I'll make a new one right up top. And then I need to make it like a small one. I'm just gonna drop it down to about there. And I really only need about that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here. I don't want it to be too unwieldy, so I'll leave it right about here. I'm gonna trim it. 
need my box, delete that, and then here's my feather that I'm going to use to kind of fill in here. Take these. And then depending on the complexity, again, if you wanted to simplify this, you could merge all these on the top after the first round. You could merge like the second round and just make your top edge um, for this. For this tutorial, I'll probably do that just to save time. So you guys don't have to see me sit here and make 10,000 more feathers. So the reality is just kind of keep clicking these up. Um, in a perfect world, you overlap them uh, and right exactly in the right spots. But this should be enough to give us kind of the illusion of a wing and make it look like, you know, these are all like actual feathers or at least close enough that you can kind of see kind of see how this is panning out now on this top edge I mean I could probably make more headway just using this um, without the um, without the wireframe on anymore and just kind of moving these around so you can see where they're shaping in they're kind of filling in here you can see that they're going here Okay, I'm going to move it over a little bit and down. And then control D. You can also use the nudge keys sometimes if you're, you want to go a little faster. Sometimes that works just so that you can, so I'm just nudging up or down after I, um, after I control D. I can nudge it down one or nudge it up one. Depending on where your nudge is set, um, that can work pretty well. Now you notice I'm overlapping the edge of the wing, and that's okay because I'm actually going to trim this off here okay so now the last part would be to actually make this solid and so to make it solid I usually keep one extra one for a little flares up a couple little flares up here but we're all just basically gonna make a make a singular piece up here that'll be this and again, I'm double clicking, so kind of and I'm gonna just gonna cut it like right here into these feathers right here. And you'll see how this works. I'm gonna get up here. Just gonna make sure I overlap them. So I'm gonna double click and then make it curve, right? And then I want to smooth it out. See how it's kind of bumpy right here? All you really need to do is go in here and click. I'm going to click right here and in the middle. And then I get rid of the other two. Delete. And then I'll get rid of these two. Delete. You can see how that already smooths it out. See how this is kind of clunky. But I'm not going to worry about the bottom because that's where my feathers are going to come in. Um, just zoom out here. And you can see how kind of rough that that, that is. So I'll make, make a note here. You can go here, delete these, delete, one here, and one here, delete these. That's how you smooth it out quick. Alright, let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to do a little quick, kind of somewhat of a cheat here, but I'm going to take, I'm going to go to wireframe mode, Alt V W. A lot of this is just tools and selecting, but um, I'm going to. Uh, so I can grab how many of these I can grab at once without grabbing ones below it. So I got a fair amount. So then, so I grab these top little skinny ones. That's pretty good. Now I'll go back to Alt VE. See which ones I got. If I'm confused, I can always change color on them. 
Okay, so I still want to grab that one. And then we'll just go down and grab the rest of them. Them. Oh, looks like I missed one in there. I missed this one. That one. Group them. You can always tell by hitting the in the color. Let's see if you got them all. Just make sure you just hit your color. Yep, got them all. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate it. Control D, right? Actually, I don't want to move it, so what I'll do is click here, I'll click off, and click here, and then let me copy it, Control C and Control V, and it throws it on top. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bump it down one, Shift, Page Down, I'm going to bump it up two, and then over two, to right about there. I want it to overlap the other ones, but I want it to be within this line here, see? And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to trim this first. So I'm going to take this, click, I'm going to click here, I'm going to hit trim. That's going to cut all the tops of those off. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take this here, I'm going to delete that extra piece, if I can, let's see. Maybe I didn't trim it enough. It's probably still connected. Yep. Just double checking where it was trimmed here because I think this piece got scooted out past where it would get trimmed off. So I want to make sure that's part of the group here it is. So let me trim it. Hold it quick and then trim. And this piece we can break apart. Should be able to, anyways. Yeah, it'll be two separate pieces. So I can just click it, and then when it's a child curve, you can click nodes, the shake tool, and then you can select the nodes that you don't want, and then you hit delete, and then it should be separated out. So now I've got this whole piece. And then I can take this piece and I can hold the shift key, click this, ungroup it a couple times. And then I'll just merge it all together and I'll just weld it. Um, hopefully that isn't going to lock me up here. Sometimes it's a good idea to save when you have uh, when you're going to weld something really big like this. Um, other times it works out all right and life goes on. This looks like one of those good times. Now you see where I have a little problem here because I forgot to get rid of those top pieces of that all the ones down here so not to worry control z comes to the rescue here a little bit now what we can do to get rid of those tops since i cut them all already as we take them here you can see all right let's look here control z group of 50 got them all right here right here. One way to do it too, um, this is a little sneaky trick I used to do uh, when I was doing a lot of image manipulation is you just hold the control key down and you flip it on this line. So if you hold the control key down you grab the farther most um, note or uh, square here and then drag it to the other side. It flips it and then when it's inverted you can, uh, you can then ungroup the whole mess. But it's easy to kind of get in here and edit now. And you can see how it's connected to the bottom. So what we can do is, first I want to kind of get rid of this last one because that one isn't going to work. And I'll just make another piece right here. And then what I'll do is I'll go to wireframe mode, OVW, and then I'll group them all. And let me zoom out so I can grab them all in one shot. I'll just grab them all here, one shot, and I'm going to ungroup, and then I'm going to go Control L, which combines them all, and then I'm going to go Control K, which breaks them all apart, 107 pieces. 
And then what you can do, you go in here and just grab one segment at a time, just kind of delete them without grabbing down there. So just delete, just delete them as you go here. Get rid of as many as you can without deleting any of the bottom ones. See that. There we go. And then get back here. Grab all these. Group them. We're going to flip them this way. Hold the control key. Flip it back. And then I'll take it and line it up here. Probably be easier to do. I'll be enhanced mode. Take it. Take this and kind of line it up. Now you just want to make sure. And when you line it up, you line it up in a way that, at the very least, has uh, an overlap to it. So it's hitting that line, and then a little bit, right? And it might that might be hard to do when you're not in wireframe. So you want a wireframe here, and you can kind of see. You want to at least overlap it a little bit, right? And then we can. Click it together and then weld them together. I'll zoom back out, see how this looks. Alt D E. Go with white. And there's the top of my wing. Now, that little piece we can fix. The bottom, if it's clunky, probably just end up cutting it off. Um, easiest way to do it. Just take the freehand tool here and just trim it off here. So I just make a shape that overlaps and I'll just hold the shift key down, cut it, delete right there. And then I can just take this bottom feather, just move it over so it's all contained within that bottom end of the wing there. And like I said, a lot of times what I like to do is do a couple extra feathers here at the top. Just makes it look a little bit more realistic. Um, sometimes I'll just do one or two like this so they stick out a little bit. Just make it up near the top here. Oops, wanted just a little bit more. Hold the shift key and weld it. There we go. Um, and you can see this little edge right here. So just cleaning this thing up. Easiest way might be to just create a node here and then bury this node where you can't see it. So you don't have to mess with anything else too much. And that's your wing right there, pretty much done. Now, one of the things that's nice about this wing, in the way that we built it, you can see that the wing itself, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the background image now, um, so it doesn't kind of have to look at that anymore. This wing itself here, I'll group them all together. You could render it pretty easy with some sort of fade, and the fade would carry on all these, um, all these pieces. So what I mean by that is, so I click on this and I change the fill to, let's say I change the fill to like two points and we'll say behind the scaled object and say okay. Then it puts it behind, kind of traps it so that, so that all these are filled including those outlines there. And then we can put that fade in and we can just do that here. Go ahead and click this. I'm going to put it in a green image so I'm going to go here, I'm going to make yellow to green, so I'm going to make this one, um, so I make it green, say so, okay, and then this one is going to be yellow, and then I want just a little bit, I can see this here, over in this, just 
going to adjust into the fade here a little bit. Let's say okay. You can see how that fade carries all along the whole image. Now to make it more accurate, probably want to go in the other direction so we can flip that around. Um, just so that, uh, let's go ahead and flip it this way. Point it up a little bit. too much yellow in it there we go so that way they that way the shadow is underneath the previous feathers here and that gives you an idea um, how to create this I want the top one though I can modify them individually too if I just hold the control key and you can go in to that just that one so if I want to just modify the top one if I don't like that fade or if I want to do a specific fade and then I just hit um, this and I say, oh, I want more yellow on just the top one. I can, uh, I can do this, modify it that way, kind of see how that's working there. Or I can go up here and hit the interactive fill tool. Kind of a faster way of doing it sometimes. There, so I can get a little bit more uh, yellow popping out there under the top. And then you can take this and you can combine this with a different image um, to create, uh, you know, finished design. If you have if you have something you can import, you know, say I bring a different image here, have this image, Control C, copy it. I'll go ahead and bring it in here. Get it out of here. Zoom out. Control V. Bring that in. Then you could. Put these wings right behind your your design right here. Let's see how that holds up right there. And you, there's a lot of things you can do. So you can morph them this way. You could also um, I'm going to group them just slightly. You could also uh, distort them a little bit. Um, use the envelope tool. You could hold the control key down, distort them this way. That may play havoc with your fades a little bit, but uh, if I go open arc, I can, you know, arc one side. I can make them skinnier on the inside if I wanted them. You know, you probably need to do that before you actually do the fades in there, but uh, you can kind of see how that works. So there's that. Let me control D. And I can hold the control key down, flip it, and then look over here, and then I'll marry them up here, right there. And then that's that's one way for you to get a real kind of realistic wing relatively quickly in Corel Draw that you can use in your images. Um, use a lot of different ways to uh, make these realistic images kind of have a really unique yet original um, look to them.